Welcome, and in this nugget, we're gonna be introduced to Amazon Config Service. Now, what is Amazon Config Service? Think for a minute, if you're inside of an enterprise or corporate environment, or even a smaller environment, but have lots of different applications running in your environment. Now, what I mean by applications, I mean, for example, two or three different web applications that each have their own set of web servers. Now, what happens when you have administrators in your environment that make configuration changes, or maybe something is behaving a little bit differently and you don't know what changed between now and maybe two weeks ago? How can we record changes to our environment, be notified of these changes to our environment, how can we also search for resources that are dedicated just to a specific application? So if we have a, for example, WordPress application called Learning AWS, and we want to pull all AWS services that are associated with, with just that one application, because your corporate environment might have four or five different applications. You might have your Learning AWS application. You might have a blog about political stuff. You might have a blog about trains. So these could be different applications. So what I've done here is I've gone through my Amazon resource or my Amazon service, and I've just fired up a few AWS instances. You notice I've created a tag named app. As we're building out our environment, we need to learn to get very intimate with using tags. For example, I like to use app. Sometimes you even have something called workload. So is it a production workload? Is it a dev workload? So you can have multiple tags. You might say, I want to pull all tags that have the app of learning AWS, but then also have the tag of workload equals to production. So we're going to pull all production resources or all dev resources. It's a great way to audit our system, but we can also use the AWS config service in order to be notified of configuration changes. So let's say that you have an administrator come in and make changes to your environment. And if you're the lead architect or lead systems administrator, then you're going to want to be notified of those changes, especially in multi-user environments. So we have CloudTrail, which allows us to log those API calls, but let's be notified when services are changed and resources are changed. So let's take a look at this here. I'm going to click on my services and just go ahead and find Amazon Config. Here it is, Config. Now, nothing's set up yet, so let's go ahead and select Get Started. So first, it's going to ask us to select an Amazon SNS simple notification service topic. It's going to stream updated configuration changes to your AWS SNS topic. Now we can create a new topic, choose from an existing topic that we already have, or choose a topic from another account. So think about this. Let's say that you have three or four different AWS accounts. You can link those AWS accounts together and have all of your AWS configs, each configured independently in the AWS account, but all go to the same SNS topic. You don't have to duplicate management of simple notification service in every single account. Well, in this nugget, we're just getting started. So we're gonna create a new topic. And let's just go ahead and leave this config topic, which is the default. Now, it's gonna create configuration history that captures all configuration of our resources. This is stored in JSON format. Basically, it takes a snapshot of all resources in our environment. So we can go back to a point in time and say, hey, what did my environment look like two weeks ago? And what's different than what it looks like today? We really have a type of version control insight that we had before. Now, we can't restore back to those snapshots currently, but we can see what's changed inside of our environment. So if something's acting wonky or strange or high availability is all of a sudden gone and you can't figure out why, maybe a port was changed on a security group. All we have to do is compare that to when we know it was a working state. So let's just create a new bucket and we'll leave it its default because of course we have to have a unique bucket name. And let's go ahead and select continue. So it's going to want an IAM role. In order to communicate with AWS services, it needs to have an IAM role. So if you want to view the view policy document, the IAM role, basically the permissions that are going to be granted. And if you look at it here, it's not change permissions. It's just describe and get information. So you're not really highly at risk here. It's going with the best least privileges, best practice, which says only assign permissions to policies that are required, the minimum amount of permissions that are required. Well, since cloud config only views your environment and does not make changes to your environment, 
we're just gonna have those get and describe API calls. So this looks good to me, so I'm gonna select allow. And it's gonna go create the new IAM role inside of my identity access management service in this AWS account. Now immediately what I have here on the right hand side is it says it's taking inventory. This could take a little while depending on how large your AWS environment is. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my EC2 here. Like I said here before, I created an app. And this app tag, this is just a tag, right? We can manage our tags by clicking on the EC2 resource and then coming down to tags. Well here, this is the name. This is really kind of the role I've assigned this EC2 instance. Perhaps you wanna give it a different tag. We're keeping simple here. So this I know is a web server, it's for web. This is my log server. Here I have a different application environment, learning DevOps, learning Linux. My learning AWS has three instances associated with it. I wanna look up all resources that have the app tag set to learning AWS because I've defined my app as the type of application running on these resources. So I know everything with an app name tag because tags are just key value stores. So whatever our tag name is and our value, so our key name and our value, and let's select lookup. Here we see that we have EC2 instances that are being returned. We have our learning AWS app and we see that we have EC2 instances that are associated with this. Now, if I click on this resource ID, it's gonna take me down into more details. It's gonna give me current configuration details. It's gonna show me my tags associated with it, the type of instance. So if I'm a architect or a system administrator and I wanna know, or even just an IT manager that's managing this, and I wanna know what my employees or the company I'm consulting for, I wanna know what instances that they have assigned and the size of those instances that they have assigned to certain environments or applications. So for example, maybe the learning AWS production environment versus the learning AWS development environment and any type of resource relationships that are associated with it. So this EC2 instance has a resource relationship with an EC2 network interface. It's a type of AWS resource. The EC2 security group that's associated with this, the subnet that's associated with the EC2 instance, any volume that's attached to the EC2 instance, and the VPC that it belongs to. And then of course, any changes that have happened to the EC2 instance. So if I were to change an EC2 security group, or if I were to add an EC2 volume, we're gonna see these configuration and resource relationships change to reflect that. So I'm looking at historical information and current configuration information for resources inside of my AWS environment. I can click on a specific date and time and it's gonna give me a snapshot of that information. So currently, since we just created it, it's this date and time. I can select manage resource and it's gonna take me over into my EC2 area. So let's again pull up our app learning AWS and then hit lookup. Now we can look up by resource ID if we wanted. So for example, I could grab my resource ID for my EC2 instance, enter in the resource ID and search by this. It's gonna be an EC2 instance resource ID type and it's gonna pull out the details for this. Now, what we need to understand about Amazon config is it's consistently recording. Now we have one recording channel per account and that recording channel name is actually called default. We can rename that if we wanted to as well. So what's being recorded is our configuration details, changes in the configuration, and changes in current relationships. As we looked at this detail before and what it was. Now currently, AWS Cloud Fit Config only supports Amazon EC2. It has a little bit of information. So what is the components of a configuration item? A configuration item has metadata component, attribute component, relationships component, current configuration component, and related events. So metadata is information about an item. For example, version ID, configuration item, time when the configuration item was captured, status of the configuration item indicating whether the item was captured successfully. Attributes, resource attributes, such as resource ID, a list of tags, the resource type, Amazon resource name. We see this here. This is our resource attributes, right? And so then also our relationships would be next. So a relationship as it relates to other AWS resources, if the other AWS resources are supported by Amazon Cloud Config. So the attached volumes. 
And then of course, current configuration. Current configuration provides information like availability zone, the volume's in, time the zone was attached, ID of the EC2 instance that it was attached to. If I wanted to click on this EC2 volume, I could find out information about this EC2 volume. And then of course our related events. Our related events is, works with CloudTrail and it shows related configuration changes. It's using CloudTrail events to record those configuration changes to figure out what's going on. Now, one of the cool things about AWS Cloud Config is not only can we be notified through simple notification service of resource changes, but we can also create a snapshot of our current environment that's supported by AWS Cloud Config. So I opened up here my command line tools. One of the cool things about AWS Cloud Config is I can take a snapshot that'll print in JSON information, the current status, the resource relationships, the attributes, all of the components of a configuration and config sample. And it's gonna store that. So I can compare it later on down the road to another snapshot of my environment to see what changes have been made. Was there a ingress or egress security group change that broke part of my application? Or perhaps maybe that's why somebody can't access SSH on a specific instance. And we can compare the two. So I'm going to use my Amazon command line interface in order to create this snapshot. It's automatically going to go to the Amazon S3 bucket configured on our AWS config channel. Now we can only have one AWS config channel at a time per AWS account. By default, when we create it, the name of the channel is actually called default. We can use the Amazon command line interface tools to update that channel name if we wanted. But for our example, we're just going to leave it the same. So to create my snapshot, I'm just gonna do an AWS config service. I wanna deliver config snapshot action and then delivery channel name is gonna be default. And then if it's all correct, it's gonna return something saying it's created a snapshot for us. Now to view information about that snapshot, to verify that it was successful, I can issue another command called AWS config service, because this is our namespace, and I want to describe delivery channel, and then hit enter. And status, we actually left out status. So it's gonna be AWS config service describe delivery channel status. Now, fortunately it told me here, did I mean to delete delivery channel, which I could do. We'll just go ahead and hit enter. That's gonna return information about delivery channel status. So basically it's saying it successfully delivered the information. So if we go over to our S3 service, and then we go into the config bucket we have, we're gonna to have to browse down pretty far because it does it in a nested directory or namespace. So we'll go into config, US East one, the date in which it was created config snapshot, and we see an, our config snapshot here. And we can view a snapshot of our configuration. Well, this is JSON format. We clearly need other tools in order to parse this, but we can write our own code to loop through it to see the changes. I also envision AWS is gonna allow you to load it to see these configuration snapshots. And there are a few third-party partners that currently have tools for you to go through and do that. But we now have our environment stored in JSON format using AWS Config Service. Now again, one of the cool things about AWS Config Service that I want you to take away is we really need to be using tags when building out our environments in larger environments. So this way is AWS Cloud Config or AWS Config supports more AWS services. We're able to see all services that are related to a specific tag. For example, if we had an elastic load balancer or relational database service instance, I wanna know if those are associated to my environment. And then when I click on one of these things, I wanna see the relationships to other AWS resources, any volumes that are attached, any other relationships that may not have tags associated with it. Now, AWS Cloud Config is really in its infancy and it doesn't support that many services, but we're gonna see it expand over the probably very near future. So that concludes it for this nugget. Go ahead and complete this nugget and find another one.